Tectonic forces collide to create inevitable change and unprecedented wealth. Artificial intelligence, data ownership rights, beyond better. A social license to operate is the ongoing acceptance by governments, organizations and citizens of new standard business practices and operating procedures to allow society to manage the value of data. The concept of social license is closely related to the idea of sustainability. Would the technology industry have evolved differently in the last decade or so if Steve had been around? Between creativity and productivity, the very idea of California has changed and the boundaries between the political, financial and digital frontiers got increasingly blurred. In the next 10 years, data ownership rights will impact technology rules of engagement to create unprecedented wealth. Everything we do generates value in data. Now we need a new social license to operate. The whole world is fascinated by this power of AI. From Davos, to the high street. This promise of a new renaissance and abundance is everywhere. But I think it's important to make sure we communicate correctly. Rather than inaugurating a whole new cycle, AI is closing a gigantic economic cycle initiated back in 1977 by the PC revolution. But the beauty of this AI promise lives on its potential to conclude the cycle that brought us all the way from hardware to software and simultaneously participate in igniting a new paradigm shift, but this time from software to data. When people talk about the AI risks, I think that the only risk we need to avoid right now is letting AI fall into the trap recently replicated by other technologies. And that's a gigantic responsibility for the industry leadership and its stakeholders. This is a general purpose technology. So any time when there are real breakthroughs in general purpose technology and the frontier is shifted, I think that broad ability to have renaissance, right? Which you'll have better medical outcomes, you'll have better educational outcomes, better you know, products and services in our lives. And that abundance, that innovation is, I think, what drives human societies forward. Yes, uh, I believe AI may help us create a better world, but it is the value of your, our data, that is the asset that will make AI and the world evolve for the better. So it is proven that we can create better cars better hospitals, better vaccines, better food, and better technologies to make everything else better. But what happens when better just can't deliver the job? When better is not enough? Like, think about it, you have now a technology like something like GPT-4 that essentially can be used to create a personal tutor for every student in the world, right? It's absolutely economically feasible, uh, even with just the government spending that's happening even in the global south, right? I'm talking about how we understand the difference, if there's any, between monetizing applications and monetizing data, and the need of an architecture to serve and deliver monetary value for the people not applications. Every significant technology breakthrough it starts by empowering people, by giving people autonomy and choice. Just like the PC revolution, the internet, and the mobile revolution. Since the AI industry is increasingly instrumented to capture valuable data, and at the same time, increasingly dependent upon valuable data to create good AI, the language we, we use today makes us feel that we have a conflict on our table, right there in the core of the business model of the industry. This conflict 
keeps pushing the conversation about data ownership rights outside the room. But I believe that monetizing applications and monetizing data are not mutually exclusive. The technology industry has performed the most epic assignment in human history, connecting all the people worldwide, putting down one by one all the barriers to give you access to computers, to information, to connectivity, to opportunities, and to other people. But now, access is pretty much taken for granted, and we struggle with the fact that computers mediate all of our conversations and transactions, that technology has become the gatekeeper, the broker, and the custodian of all of our relationships. And when we talk about relationships, trust is inversely proportional to information asymmetry. It is unsurprising how suddenly connecting everyone feels weirdly similar to separating everybody. I feel like our license to operate as an industry depends on that because I don't think the world will put up anymore with any of us coming up with something that has not thought through safety, trust, equity. In the last 10 years, people have witnessed software disrupting industries and markets all over the world, social media erasing the trust of the media ecosystem, and recently, cryptos trying to become the social media of finance. We saw a 28% Nasdaq drawdown as we watched the whole Unicorlandia parade, Francis Hogan, and Silicon Valley Bank collapsing in 48 hours under the first ever digital bank run. We have to take the unintended consequences of any new technology. Um, along with all the benefits and think about them simultaneously as opposed to waiting for the unintended consequences to show up and then address them. When I think about any new technology, innovations, unintended consequences or benefits, I think that the challenge is not at the innovation side of it, but on the incentives driving the people in the industry. It is a matter of values and business models which I think was initially contemplated back in May 2022 by the Apple campaign, Privacy That's iPhone. Safeguarding the people's trust in a business is the best way to protect the industry's social license to operate. Software has already eaten the world. We are all data poor and we need to become data rich. We got to go and fix asymmetry. Asymmetry is the lack of balance or equality between two things, lack of symmetry. In economics, asymmetry can refer to situations where one party has more information or power than the other, leading to imbalances in negotiations or transactions. The asymmetrical or unequal distribution of resources, opportunities and privileges among individuals or groups is known as inequality. I have a question. How can us having control over our personal information, how can us having control over our data impact the way the world works? How would the world be different if we owned our data? The whole value of the world comes from your data, from all your relationships. This is the store of value for if we're going to a data economy, if we can agree that there's a data economy, everybody's heading to this world driven by data, the value is on your relationships and the data you create. How can we benefit from the data we create? That's what we do every day, right? We, the only thing that we do is create value and data. So we're combining both. This is where the source of value comes. How do we know that the data we create has value? That is just like money. You, you only know how much it's worth and how much you need it when you need it. Have you ever needed money in your life? That's like rights. Same you thing. You only know about rights once they've been taken from you. Exactly.